In this video, we are going to create the vectors for the Adirondack chair side rail component that we will cut on the CNC. We've got to create the outside vector here. We've got to create the rounded rectangles, and we've got to cut this slat for the seat slats. So we're going to start with this outside shape, and we're going to open up our arc menu and pull this into our screen. We're going to use a start and radius arc. So with this side rail layer locked, I'm going to zoom in and click on this little intersection of this line right at the corner here. I'm going to click for the start of my arc. I'm going to zoom into the sharp corner down here for the end of my arc. And then I'm going to shape this arc by eye pulling and moving my mouse until that arc closely mirrors the shape of that side rail. And I'm going to click. It's obviously not perfect, but it has a nice actual arc shape, which is what I want. You'll notice if you look here that the width of our side rail is 4 inches. So with my curve, my arc that I just made created, I'm going to use the offset command. And I'm going to change my distance to 4, and I'm going to pull down and offset that. And now if I turn off my side rails layer, you can see I have these arcs perfectly offset from each other. and ready for the next step. So the next thing that is easiest is to connect across here. So I'm going to grab a polyline. I'm going to snap to the end of this arc. I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm just going to pull past and click. At this point we need to create this right here. And the easiest way to do this is going to be to create a straight line right here. So I'm going to click my mouse. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to pull a straight line down a little bit long with my shift key down so it's going straight down. I'm going to click and hit enter. And then with gumball selected, I'm going to Grab this green arrow, I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. So if I turn this off, now you can see that these can intersect. And to get these to come out here, we are going to use a command called extend. I'm going to type that in my command line. This is going to be my boundary object, and I'll press enter. And then I will click on this curve and this curve to extend. And I'll hit enter. At this point I can select everything underneath the puzzle pieces is the trim tool. And I can trim and trim and trim and trim. I'll hit enter. And the last thing I'll do is join those together. And if I turn this back on you can see that I've got this little curve right here. And we can see that this has a arc with a distance of about three quarters of an inch from here to here. So we're going to just fillet these corners and we don't know the specific radius right there. So we're gonna just eyeball that. So I'm gonna hide this I'm going to type in fillet, and I'll start with a radius of 3 quarters of an inch, 0 0.75, enter. First curve is here, second curve is there, I'm going to right click to repeat my command, first curve is here, second curve is there, and I'll turn that back on and I'm going to take a look and that looks pretty good with a radius of 0.75. So we have that done, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a rectangle. 
So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I'm gonna snap here, and I'm gonna snap here. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I'm gonna snap here, and you can see I wanna go here, but I want my rectangle to be turned. So I'm gonna come up to the three point option, click on three point, and I'm gonna snap here, and then snap here. And I now need to put on the arcs on my rectangle. So you can see this is supposed to have a width of a half an inch. So I'm gonna scale this rectangle in one dimension. Scale 1D. I'm going to snap here and snap here. And I'm gonna type in 0.5, enter. There's not much of a change, but now we know this is exactly a half an inch. So with that, we're going to make an arc with a radius of a quarter inch. So we're going to select our arc menu once again, and we're going to select the start and radius arc. I will start it here, end it here, and in this case I'm going to type in a radius value of 0.25. Enter, and click. And I will do the same thing at the other end. Click, click, 0.25, enter. And I can now take this and use my trim tool and trim away those arcs and join. I've got that one done now. We can come down to this one right here and do the same thing. It also has a half inch width, so we're going to take this and scale 2D. Click and click and type in 0.5, enter. And now we'll use our start and radius arc. Click, click, 0.25, enter. And click and I'm going to do it one more time click click 0.25 enter and click I can do the same here and now I can trim trim and trim and I will join those together. So we are one curve away from being done with this. We are going to do the same as we did for our back slats. We will trace this in, we will offset it, and then we'll add some arcs. So I'm going to grab my interpolate points curve. I'm going to zoom in on this corner right here. And I am going to trace this freely flowing curve with just the right number of points in order to keep this nice and smooth. I'll hit enter to end my command. This has a half inch distance here, so I'm going to select my curve. Type in offset. In this case, I'll change my distance to 0.5 and pull down. And now with this set, I will do a start and radius arc. Type in my radius of 0.25. And click. Do the same at this end. click and then I want to make sure that I select these hold my shift key down and click on this 
and click the puzzle pieces to join this together. So I now have the slat for my seat slats to fit in. I've got the mortise for my back to fit in. And I've got the mortise for my front rail to fit in. And we're gonna turn this back on and just make sure we like what we see. I see that this bottom is just a little bit low, so I'm gonna raise this up just a touch. And you can see this is supposed to be one and three quarters of an inch, and it looks a little bit big to me. So I'm gonna type in scale to scale and select the scale one dimension. I'm gonna go from here to here, and I'm gonna type in 1.75, enter. And now that looks exactly the size that I want it to be. So we have now created our side rail vectors. The next thing we'll do is export these and set up our tool paths in Aspire to cut these on the CNC router. I'm going to save these now and make sure that I've got my side rail and back slats all ready for export.